Okay, hi besties. <laughs> Just a, a warning for this video. For the vast majority of this video, from like three minutes in, I have lipstick all over my teeth. And like, listen, <laughs> I'm so sad, but it's okay. It's okay. Am I about to refilm a whole video over some lipstick on some teeth? Yes, I, I was going to before Tom convinced me not to. You can either ignore it, or you can clown me for it every moment that you see it and it brings you great amusement in my, in my demise. So there's your choices, let's get into video. Hey besties, welcome back. It is time for another book haul. I don't know how I keep doing this. How do I keep acquiring this mini book? My actions don't require any defense. In the same situation, I do it again. But before we get into the video, I am so excited once again to say thank you to the sponsor, which is Book of the Month. I love Book of the Month. Listen, I've spoken about this before, but Book of the Month has been my dream collaborator throughout my time on booktube. I used to manifest this. I used to dream and now I get to work with them and I just feel so, so lucky. No matter who you are, where you come from, if you've got a dream, there's no one out there that can stop you from achieving it. Book of the Month are this amazing book subscription service where you get a choice of five new releases that come out that month. It's promoting new and emerging authors. There's often a lot of debuts and you pick one of those books and you get sent it in the iconic blue box in this special Book of the Month edition and it's just amazing. Their team goes through hundreds and hundreds of books every month to figure out what to include. And something I've always said I love about Book of the Month, they pick some of the books that no one was on no one's radar, right? And then they pick it, it's one of the month's selections, and then it becomes one of the most popular books that year because it's such a good book. So you're really finding like amazing quality books with this service. You can skip a month if you want. So if there's no books that interest you that particular month, there's no risk attached. And very amazingly, oh my God, so exciting. You can use my code MEGWITHBOOKS to get your first book for just $9.99. A brand new release hardcover for just $9.99. It is crazy. I do just have to say that the majority of my audience, the majority of people watching are from the US. Book of the month currently only ship to the US. If you're international, they don't currently ship to you, but the majority of you watching are from the US. So that's why I'm able to work with them. So let's quickly go through the books for November. The, this is an amazing month. Like there's so many books here I'm very excited to read. One of the ones that actually surprised me that I'm probably the most excited to read is A Little Hope by Ethan Joella. This is the story of all these people from this small Connecticut town. And each chapter follows a different person from this town telling their story, which I've always been really interested in books that follow this kind of structure. I've always wanted to read something like that. So I am so excited to read this one. It really surprised me how excited I am. But yeah, I've heard it's very, very emotive. Then we have The Family by Naomi Kropitsky. This is the story of these two girls who grew up together. Their dads are in the mafia and then something, you know, seismic happens that changes their lives forever. Then we have The Keeper of the Night by Kylie Lee Baker. I know this is about this um, girl who like has to collect souls or something in London, but then something happens. She gets turfed out. She flees to Japan. I've heard this is such a good YA fantasy debut. Next we have a book with an incredible title, which is How to Marry Keanu Reeves in 90 Days by K.M. Jackson. Basically our protagonist finds out that Keanu Reeves is getting married in 90 days and she's like, not on my watch not on my watch and she tries to go and get married to Keanu Reeves and then finally we have The Collective by Alison Grayling. This sounds amazing. It's all about female rage which I've really been enjoying reading about lately. Her daughter was killed by this very like privileged boy and he's got away with it and she meets this group of women who like endorse each other's anger I think. I'm not really sure but I've really been enjoying reading books about female rage so i'm very excited to read this one and separate from those like original five selections each month they also have add-ons which are really great so there's books that you can add on to your order if you like the look of them and two that i have got to show you are two really exciting celebrity autobiographies we've got will by will smith and we've got my body by emily ratajkowski there's been a lot of buzz about both of these lately and about things that are, like being said about them so i'm very interested and excited to own these so yeah it's super cool that there's books that you can add 
on to your order and you can get more books, why not? I mean, come on. So yeah, like I said, make sure you use the link down below and the code MEGWITHBOOKS to get your first book for $9.99, which is just so exciting. Okay, let's get into the other books I've hauled. It's recently, oh my god, I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm gonna spontaneously combust. I think it has been two months actually, which isn't that bad, listen. Me making questionable justifications and you guys supporting my delusion. Blah, 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 blah. Also, if you're wondering, yes, the bookshelves, I've got new bookshelves, it's a whole new setup. I need to figure out how to film in front of them, but also there's no, they're just shoved in there. Not really in this one. <laughs> Maybe I should put some books there because that's really what you can see. Hold up. Now there's some books there. That looks better. What books do I want to talk about first? I'm not going to go through these with any rhyme or reason. I'm literally just going to go grab books. Okay, so a lot of you all know that my favourite cosy mystery series is the Lady Hardcastle Mysteries. And I just decided to go ahead and buy the first two which I have already read and the third one which is going to be what I read next. So this is about this lady and her maid and like them solving mysteries in like 1900s England. They are just some of the best cosy mysteries ever. I love the audiobooks. Like, if you have Scribd, which if you don't, I do have a code you can use to get two months free. Listen to these audiobooks. They're so good. They're just fun, silly mysteries, and I just love them. And yeah, so Death Around the Bend. I'm hoping to read this month, but I have got quite a busy month. <laughs> I've got quite a busy month, so I don't know if I'm going to quite get to it, but I'm hoping that I will because then the next book in the series is a short Christmas novella. So I want to read this first so I can read that around Christmas time. So yeah, pray for me that I actually read this. <laughs> okay, then let's chat about some books that some publishers have sent to me. I've got three here. Firstly, we've got this one, which sounds fucking bonkers. It is a YA. It's called Every Line of View by Naomi Gibson. Lovely sprayed edges, can we just say. Thank you very much. This is about a girl who has built a boyfriend with code. It's getting weird. Every line of view, line of code, you get it? <laughs> and like, Henry, our boy, our boy, he's got out of control. Henry thinks he runs the show, essentially, is what I know about this. It sounds gripping, like psychological thriller YA. I'm very excited to read this. It's not long at all either. It's only like 280 pages of like quite big font, so it wouldn't take long to read. This is something that's like ideal for um, a readathon, I would say. But yeah, this sounds like, what? Like, come on, like, why are we making a boyfriend out of code? Why are we doing that? But also, I'm intrigued. Then, oh my god, I actually cried. I actually cried a bit when this arrived. Like, it was a moment. It was a moment. We have got Midnight in Everwood by M.A. Kuznir. I... You should brush your teeth at least twice a day. Aim to brush for between two and three minutes. Look at this, look at this, look at, look at her. Look at this fine audition. Are we not crying? In the darkness of night, magic awaits. It's a reimagining of the Nutcracker. This is giving me Bear the Nightingale vibes. It's giving me Bear the Nightingale vibes, which if, you, if you've been around, if you've been around, you will know it is one of my favorite fantasies of all time. If not, if it's like up there. The Bear the Nightingale, oh, it's set in Nottingham, in, which is a place in the UK, if you don't know. <laughs> in 1906, listen, we've just proved that with the Lady Hardcastle Mysteries. I love, you know, anything Victorian, Edwardian. I just love, what was that? That's what she said. And you know what? I, what was that? Okay. I just love anything set in that time period. I just think it's like, oh, oh my God, I just love it. I am just so excited to get to this. Thank you so much to HQ Stories for sending me this. I just love this edition. And then I got sent Theatre of Marvels by Leanne Dudsworth. This comes out April 2022, so we've got a while. Again, listen, these people know me. Have I got shit on my face? No. <laughs> Set in Victorian London. It's a theatre. I just love anything theatrical. If you don't know me, I did drama nearly all my life. Only a couple of years ago did I stop doing drama. Like I did drama from the ages of four to 18. I, I am theatrical. <laughs> So I love anything with that kind of vibe. And I think the new star act goes missing and our main character wants to investigate it. I love anything of that kind of vibe where like our main character is investigating something that they're kind of drawn up in as well. That's something I really, really enjoy. So April 2022, put it on your anticipated releases of next year lists. I am very, very excited to get to this. And then I've actually got quite a few books that my lovely patrons have gifted to me. If you don't know, I have a Patreon. I have had it for a few months now and it is just the most amazing, supportive, 
lovely community. Like it's kind of gone beyond my wildest dreams for kind of the relationship that we would build up. They gift each other books on there, like not just me, like everyone sends each other books and it's just, um, just this lovely, lovely experience. I've had so much fun doing weekly live shows with them and it's just become such a big part of my life that I love so much. So I'm so lucky that some of them have sent me some books over the past couple months. Firstly, this one I almost cried because it came with a lovely note, but Lisa sent me The Tea Dragon Festival by Kay O'Neill. So... <laughs> This is a story about a girl named Lucky. If you don't know, this is the second in the kind of tea dragon world of graphic novels, but this one has been near impossible to get. Like I, like I've tried to get this in the UK. You can't get it. Waterstones, Amazon, Book Depository. Like I've looked everywhere. I've looked everywhere, and it was very, very hard to get. But Lisa was able to get it from her work, and she sent it to me. And I now own all three of these. I, I've only read the first one, but I've, I'm kind of saving these up because they are literally the most joyous experience. I mean, look at this. Isn't it just so gorgeous? Oh my God, I just I just love these so, so much. This one is a prequel to the first one and I just can't wait to dive back into this magical, magical world again. Then Claire watched my most recent Reading Random Mysteries vlog and gifted me The Man Who Died Twice by Richard Osmond. This literally arrived like two days ago and I screamed. I am so excited. My mum has already read it. <laughs> She was like, give it to me. <laughs> so thanks, Claire. My mum has already read it. I've spoken about this series a lot recently, but it's about these friends who run a murder club at their retirement home, but then murder actually happens. So now they're kind of investigating actual crimes and it's just funny. It's ingeniously plotted, like so many twists and turns throughout the books. I just think like the heart and the humour and the the joy that's at the center of these books is what makes them. And they're just amazing murder mysteries as well, which is just incredible. I cannot wait to read this one. Thursday Murder Club is up there as one of my, if not, mm, I still don't know if it's my favorite book I've read so far this year. That's hard, that's really, really, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Then Shanice very kindly sent me Murder Most and Ladylike by Robin Stevens with this amazing sprayed edges. This has been a series. Listen, I know it's not a series. I've said I'm not talking about a series anymore. We're done. We're not shaming me anymore. It's not happening. Well, they're speechless. This is a middle grade murder mystery series, which I have always wanted to read. I've just heard amazing things about it. And I love middle grade murder mysteries because they're just so like fun and they've got this nostalgia to them that I really really enjoy. They make me feel like a kid again. I know it's about I think, these young girls who kind of have set up this detective agency at their school and they never really had any real crimes to investigate but now something happens. Again I almost screamed when I saw this. I'm so excited to get to this one. And then Tiffany very kindly sent me two books. First was Days of Blood and Starlight by Lainey Taylor. I love these new UK covers. I have read the first one, Daughter of Smoke and Bone. I didn't adore it but I love Lainey Taylor's writing so, so much. I think Lainey Taylor has some of those beautiful, lyrical, magical writing out there. I'm really excited to get to this one. I think I do want to finish the Stranger Dreamer series first. I think I want to read Muse of Nightmares and then carry on with this series. But I just love these covers and Lainey Taylor's writing is some of my favourite writing. Even if the story wasn't my favourite, her writing is impeccable. And then Tiffany also sent me The Young Elites by Marie Lu. So all of my patrons get to pick two books off of my own TBR to put into, where is she? This pot, which is very full. And then if I get the rose prompt in TBR clue, do I pick this out? But Tiffany really wanted me to read The Young Elites. She was like, I'm gonna get it for you so that I can choose that as one of my books. So she did, she got it for me. I literally know nothing about it. I know it's like dystopian. There was like an illness that swept the nation years ago where following like a main character who's kind of like, I think the chosen one kind of vibes. Marie Lu has been in that, listen, that awful NFT business lately. <laughs> I was rooting for you! We were all rooting for you! How dare you! Which I, you yeah, know, that was terrible. That was, Marie Lou, that was terrible. I mean, come on now. That was a scam, scam, scam. That was not good. I'm still very thankful for Tiffany for getting me this, and if it comes up in the rose prompt, I will read it. Very intriguing. I'm hoping Marie Lou can redeem herself in the public eye at some point and apologize properly for that NFT business because that was you know, that was an experience. But I'm very happy to finally own this kind of like 
booktube classic that I often feel like I missed out on books that came out like when did this come out my guess is 2013 mm, 2014 I was close I feel like I missed out on a lot of books that were popular like 2013 2014 2015 I was reading but I just wasn't reading this stuff I often just got stuff out the library and I didn't really know what big books were so I often feel like I missed out on that kind of vibe so I'm very happy to own this oh these are some exciting books friends <laughs> <laughs> I obviously I'm working with Book of the Month, they're the sponsor of this video. I should have mentioned this at the start actually. When I was working with them, they at one point very kindly said to me that I could pick three books off of their like backlist, like their previous book box books, um, to be sent. And I picked three and I'm very excited. The first one I picked was Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I have read both of Evan Hugo and Daisy Jones. I've also read, oh, what was that novella called by Taylor Jenkins Reid where it's like the people whose spouses are cheating on them. What is that called? I read that and I actually really enjoyed it. I'll put a picture in, I can't remember what it's called. But I of course had to pick Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I know we're following like a family of siblings and a party they're having one night and I think most of the book takes place in one night. I also really like the US cover so I knew I wanted to own this version. I've heard mixed things but I, I mean I have to read Taylor Jenkins Reid. There's just no, there's no choice. Then I picked The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. So this one I didn't know too much about but like I've seen it everywhere so I was just like okay there's no choice but to stand 18th century London I mean you can't write it that's a little bit earlier isn't it 18th yes so that's pre-Victoria what what English era are we in here Georgian or, or Stuart's Georgian, one of the two, Georgian or Stuart's. Both good eras in their own right. <laughs> well, not really, but you know what I mean. We're following two timelines and I believe there's like, there was historically this apothecary that was maybe like poisoning men or some shit, like helping, am I right? Yes, who sells world disguised po poisons to use against the oppressive men in their lives. I was right. And then I think in the modern day, it's like one of her ancestors, like kind of investigating what happened. Very intrigued. I saw this everywhere, so I had to ask this one. And then I made a decision, which you may say was questionable. Um, I don't think it was, but <laughs> I chose Survive the Night by Rodi Sago. That's disgusting. I'm blocking you. I block somebody on this thing. This is going to be fun. Now, this has had terrible reviews. It's had bad, 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 bad reviews. So I am nervous. I am nervous. I know we're following this girl who I think thinks she is trapped in a car with a serial killer that's been terrorizing like this university campus. And like the whole book is them trapped in this car together. Listen, it's had, it's had interesting reviews. Let's just say that. But I have read all of Riley Sega's like newer releases. I've read newer. newer. Newer, newer, newer. <laughs> newer releases. I've read Lock Every Door and Home Before Dark. So this is just the natural progression of things that I should read this as well. Then let's chat about some books I have bought myself recently. The first, this was one pound in my local charity shop, which usually does not have a great selection. But this week it said, try me bitch. I got The Night She Disappeared by Lisa Jewell. This was literally like three days after it had come out. Like three days after it came out, I got it for one pound. Excuse me? You just, I'm untouchable. I'm actually untouchable. I'm fashion, I'm style. And if they can't keep up, then that's their problem. So I literally know nothing about it. I picked it up because it was one pound and I've read some Lisa Jewel. I've read The Family Upstairs, which I like moderately enjoyed. It was like a quick, fun thriller. I think it's about this girl who went missing years and years ago and then our main character in the present day kind of investigating it. Listen, it was a pound. You would have picked it up too you would have picked it up too for a pound. So don't judge me for not knowing what it's about. They also had Not A Happy Family, which I have up there for Sherry by Sherry Lapina. I did not get that for a pound. My grandparents got that for me full price. And yeah, hopefully I'll enjoy some more of Lisa Jewel's stuff. Next, oh, I'm very excited for this one. I'm gonna be reading it this month. It's got makeup on it. Let's not, let's not discuss that. Um, oh, a lot of makeup. Oh, that's embarrassing. Oh, it's not coming off either. Okay, uh, this was expensive. Okay, we're gonna need to, we're gonna need to rectify that. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I got The Death of Jane Lawrence by Caitlin Starling. So I am co-hosting the Literary Dead Book Club this month in November for this book with Books and Lala. And I am so I've always wanted to read Caitlin Starling. Oh, it's got like very small margins. This said thin margins on word. You know when you like need to fit more on a page so you put thin margins. Anyway, we're following Jane Lawrence who enters this marriage of convenience for her particularly to kind of help her continue to live her life. It is historical. And the guy says, yeah, all right, we'll get married, but you can never come to my house, like my family house. And one night she like says, 
I'm coming, bitch. I'm coming. So she goes over there and she finds him changed. I think he doesn't remember it the next day. Very excited to read this. I'm going to be reading it this month. I don't currently have a video plan for this to be in. So I may just do like a 24 hour, 48 hour reading vlog where I try and read this. But yes, very excited. This one I picked up because it was two pound. This is People of Abandoned Character by Claire Whitfield. I got recommended this at an event I went to recently. And I, ooh, exciting. This is so exciting. So in this, we're following this newlywed woman. She's like in this, I'm married. And she's like, whoa, life is great. And then it starts to turn sour. And then the Jack the Ripper murders start to occur and she's like shit it's my husband man i think things start to kind of come together like he's always out the night that the murders happen i think he's also a doctor surgeon he's a surgeon so he'd know like you know people often say jack the ripper was like a surgeon or someone who had um knowledge of the body and she's like shit it's my husband so yeah super excited to read this let me know if you've read it anything with that kind of font that font gets me. They know how to get me. They know how to get me in those Victorian books because it just needs that font and I'm picking it up. Not going to speak about this for long, but I did receive White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson. Um, read it. Didn't love it. It was okay. Thank you again no, to the publisher for sending it to me because I was so excited. Like, literally, I begged for this book. I begged to receive this book. I was, I had a prayer circle. Like, I, I had a shrine set up to receive this book. And then I did, and I didn't enjoy it. So I feel very guilty. And then a book I have hauled for a secret, secret video is The Mystery of Black Hollow Lane by Julia Nobel. I don't know much about this because I didn't pick it up on my own volition. I picked it up for a reason that you shan't know yet. I think we're following wing a group of friends and this middle grade mystery. I've heard it's very twisty turny. That's all I know. Let me know if you've read this. Like I said, I'm going to be reading it this month. Hopefully, yeah, I'm going to be reading it this month. So I will find out soon enough. But a new middle grade mystery spooky ooky series? Yes, please. Like I should love this. And then quickly, I'm not going to tell you in depth about these books. So I spoke about them last month when I did my last month sponsorship of Book of the Month. But these are all the books that I got last month from Book of the Month, which I'm very excited to read. I'm literally going to say their names because I've spoken about them in depth before. But we've got Every Di Everything We Didn't Say by Nicole Barr, which is a thriller. We have The Lincoln Highway by Amor Taos. This is a historical fiction by the same author who wrote Gentleman in Moscow. So very excited for this because I've heard amazing things about this author. Another author who I've heard incredible, amazing things about is Colson Whitehead, and this is Harlem Shuffle. So super excited to read this. Colson Whitehead is an author I've always wanted to read from. Then we have The Sweetest Remedy by Jane Igaharo, The Book of Magic by Alice Hoffman, Apples Never Fall by Leanne Moriarty, another author I need to give a go soon, and The Perishing by Natasha Dion. So that is my book haul for this month. So many incredible, amazing books that I am so lucky to have received. It's honestly just been um, an amazing time and I feel so lucky to have received or bought or however I acquired any of these books. I feel very lucky to own them all. Let me know if you've read any of them down below. I would absolutely love to know. If you have any recommendations for books you think I should prioritise, I would love to know. So please leave them down below. If you've gotten to the end, comment any kind of snowy, wintry emoji for this gorgeous book. I think this is one of my favourite books I've hauled because it's just so incredibly gorgeous. Comment it down below if you have reached the end of the video. Make sure you go check out the book of the month link down below and use the code to make with books um i feel so lucky to have my own code so please use the code if you want to check out book of the month and thank you so much for watching as always i'll see you very soon in another video bye